Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Adam and my job is to make you a little bit better at English every single day. Today we're in part four of my Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde ultimate study guide. So we're going to go straight into that together. Now, if this is the first video you're seeing, you might want to go back and look at part one, two and three, but it's going to be looking at chapter seven and eight of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde today. If you want to get this resource for free for yourself, just head over to my website, gcseenglishexperts.com. Go to the freebies section, go to the study guides, and you will be taken to this lovely little page here. And this is going to be where I keep all of my study guides that are free. So at the moment, I've got study guides on Macbeth, Inspector Calls, Lord of the Flies, Christmas Carol, Dr. Jack and Mr. Hyde. I'm trying to do a few study guides a week. So if you do need anything specific, you can request a study guide here. But otherwise, you can just scroll through, find the one that you want. In this case, we're doing Dr. Jack and Mr. Hyde. So we're going to be straight into chapter seven. And this is called The Incident at the Window, one of the shortest chapters in the novel. And what we see here is Utterson and Enfield are going for their weekly walk. They go every Sunday and have a little little walk or a constitutional, as it's very poshly called. And Utterson and Enfield are walking past Dr. Jekyll's house. They see him in the window. They're talking to him briefly. And then suddenly there's like this horrible, like facial expression that comes over Dr. Jekyll and he slams his window shut. And Mr. Utterson and Mr. Enfield look at each other and they are very afraid of what they've seen and it, it creeps them out, but they decide not to say anything about it afterwards. The major quote from this chapter seven is, the words were hardly uttered before the smile was struck out of his face and succeeded by an expression of such abject terror and despair. Now this is the narrator speaking, but it is about Dr. Jekyll and it's very scary Gothic imagery. Basically there's this terrified, awful, scary looking facial expression that comes on to Dr. Jekyll's face. It's almost supernatural looking, right? And so he slams the window shut so that Mr. Utterson and Mr. Enfield can't see anymore. And this links to the major themes of fear and transformation. We still, as an audience, don't know that Dr. Jekyll is transforming into Mr. Hyde, but we're probably getting more and more of a hint of that. The fact that Dr. Lanyon says that Dr. Jekyll's into some weird science fiction, unscientific, border dash kind of stuff. The fact that there's this weird link between Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jekyll that doesn't really make sense. And now the fact that he seems to have like a terrified face and has to hide the window, hide under the window. There's something really dodgy going on here. So in terms of context though, for this chapter, it illustrates the psychological pressures of repression, repressing the darker aspects of the self which is aligned with Sigmund Freud, the psychologist or psychiatrist. So we do get this sense that Dr. Jekyll's transforming face is meant to be a symbol of the fact that behind the face of a Victorian gentleman, there was actually like a guy that had good intentions, but also some less good intentions as well. All human beings are a blend of good and bad, whether we like it or not, that's true. And so the Victorians, though, were repressed and tried to never do anything that could be considered to be wrong. For example, Dr. Jekyll enjoys drinking alcohol, right? He could never have more than like the one glass that was societally accepted. If he dared have a second glass, even if it wasn't getting drunk, he would maybe be seen as being a drunkard and being like chastised for that. And that is a big problem. I'm also going to give you quite a grim story time for a second here as well. So the other like implication of the face contorting and slamming down the window for the Victorians would have been a sexually transmitted disease called syphilis. I know that's very graphic. It is a bacterial sexually transmitted disease. So in modern times, it is very curable. But at that time, before antibiotics and, and modern medicine, if a person were to contract this disease, it would slowly kill them and eventually the bacteria from the disease would actually even get into the brain of the victim and it would cause them to have weird contortions on their faces they'd get weird like skin rashes and diseased looking things around their faces effectively at the end stage of the disease you'd almost be like a walking zombie so the fact that dr jekyll's face is contorting here could to mr enfield and mr utterson suggest that he has contracted this and that would mean that they would have thought that maybe he was engaging in prostitution and stuff like that on the streets of London 
so it's quite a big deal so we're into chapter eight the last night which is the longest chapter so it was very difficult for me to create a short summary and one one little quote for this if you're enjoying this content please do like it and share it and subscribe i as you can see i spent hours and hours making this for you guys and my intention is to try and help you with your exams you know show me a bit of love i'm trying my best here with you guys so paul and utterson break into dr jekyll's laboratory or his cabinet that it's basically an old-fashioned way of saying like this little room in his house and they find mr hyde is dead and dr jekyll is nowhere to be found the most important quote from this chapter after thinking about lots of different quotes i decided on when mr utterson says this is beyond me paul my mind misgives me he was wild when he was young a long while ago to be sure just before mr hyde is exposed as being dead on the floor of this cabinet mr utterson and paul is dr jekyll's servant are about to smash down this door which obviously i think the graphic there is pretty good for that right smash down the door and mr utterson is really afraid of what he's going to find when he opens the door he knows that his friend dr jekyll had a very wild side to him and that he's probably wrapped up in some really bad stuff so this is all foreboding and foreshadowing like that the mystery is about to be unveiled as we come through the door and then unfortunately we get through the door and we actually get a deeper mystery still which is mr hyde is now dead on the floor and dr jekyll's nowhere to be found so robert louis stevenson does a really good job of keeping this a mystery story because we think we're about to uncover the mystery and then there's another layer of mystery which will be covered in chapter 9 and chapter 10. but the the major theme here obviously is mystery and fear Paul and the other servants of Dr. Jekyll are very afraid of what's going on. This strange creature that they don't believe is Dr. Jekyll has been hiding out in this cabinet for weeks, trying to get this particular um, chemical, and they don't understand why. Paul has seen this creature one time, and it's looked like very animalistic and strange and dark. All of this links to the idea of tensions and criminality under the surface of Victorian society again. You've got to remember this is the time of Jack the Ripper, right? The first time of serial killers and murders, prostitution, as I said, alcoholism, drug use. These things were rampant in London. London was becoming more and more like Gotham City or something from like Batman, right? It was a very dark place in a lot of parts of London. And yet you have Victorian gentlemen still who are trying to put on all the nicest like designer clothes, the most well-groomed and try and make it look like everything's okay. This wasn't a time of things being okay. So that is part four i have finished those two chapters we're going to go into part five next and that's going to be chapter nine and chapter ten and the end of this study guide but yeah i'll see you in the next one